Hey everybody, it's Gil here with the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser. And in last week's episode, I took you along on a little bit of a business trip. I showed you the less than glorious side of business travel. That's canceled flights, delayed flights, hanging out in airports. Heck, I even ended up having to drive to another state just to get a flight back in time so I could get home to an appointment that I had that morning. Also, we went ahead and moved into the new place. We took you along, showed you how we enjoyed it for the first couple days as if it were a vacation. So if you joined us in last week's video, you know we went ahead and moved into a new house in Florida. What that means for us is we now need to prepare and get ready to sail Dream Chaser from Louisiana back over to the west coast of Florida where we can now park it right at our house. I'd love to say we're about to do that right away, but the reality is it's hurricane season, so we have to think about the right time to do it, look for the right weather window, and honestly, we still have some work we've got to do on the boat to get it prepared for that. So it's time to start getting serious about what those things are and get that work scheduled and planned. We're kind of thinking maybe December time frame, but we don't know for sure on the time frame of sailing her back. This week, that journey continues. And if we're going to have a house right here on the water, and we're not going to have the big sailboat here for a while until we can sail it back, well, frankly, Deb and I are water people. We want something that will get us out there on the water. So interestingly enough, when this house was for sale, uh, the people that had it had a 22-foot Mako center console fishing boat, kind of a deep V boat with an outboard. And we really thought that'd be a great little boat to have. We could tool around, run around a little bit out in the, in the bay, and it would be a good option for us. Uh, it turned out that that didn't work out. They, uh, they ended up selling the boat before we ended up closing on the house. So we started thinking, what would be a good boat for doing this? We were looking at like pontoon boats, but frankly, I want something that's a little bit more seaworthy. It goes a little faster. Um, so we started looking at sort of deck boats, if you will, right? Uh, something that has plenty of room, maybe has a little head in there just so that the girls are on it and they have something they can use, um, but still gives us the ability to get out on the water, pull up to a sandbar, do some swimming, do some fishing and running around. So that exploration begins this week as well. Yeah, we apparently have a problem. It's an addiction problem, apparently, but we got that for running around here's in. Your, here's Gilbert coming with our new ride. How you doing, baby? You're blowing bubbles for him? Can you please help me open it? Just a minute. Did you forget where we lived? So she's a 2004 Chaparral Sinesta 274, essentially a 27 foot boat. She has a uh, 5.7 liter V8 inboard outboard engine with counter rotating props. Um, and you know what, for a 15 year old boat, a lot of the stuff works on it. I was kind of impressed. A couple little things don't, like the paddle wheel speedometer doesn't work and the tachometer wasn't working and it was missing the anchor light. But other than that, this thing was ready to go. So we were pretty excited about it. I think it's gonna be a great fit for us and I look forward to using it quite a bit. Man, what a cool experience that was. So we're new to this house. I'm sitting on a conference call at my desk. I'm kind of on a video conference. And when I'm sitting at my desk at home, I look out the windows and see the water. Well, I kind of saw a bunch of splashing and currents going on in the water. I was like, oh, I wonder what that is. As I stood up and looked, I could see dolphins out there in the canal. It was really cool. So I yelled to Deb and Swab, you know, hey, go check it out. There's dolphins in the canal. Um, so forgive the footage here, but this is just what I could actually take from my phone while on a conference call. Uh, but it was cool to see, and I look forward to seeing a little bit more of this. Certainly it's going to impact the fishing, I'm sure, but it was pretty cool to do either way. And then after that, Chad's decided to go in the pool and practice some of her swim flips when she's doing laps. Pretty neat time. I think I found my new morning Zen coffee spot for sure. <laughs> it's pretty nice.
So it's interesting. I find myself most mornings sitting out here drinking a cup of coffee and just enjoying the sunrise. And and it's it's kind of interesting. It becomes my Zen moment. And then I realized it's not much different than what we did on the boat. I would come up top with my cup of coffee. I would sit in a chair on the deck of the boat. And despite the fact that we're living on dirt, we're still doing the things that are close to nature and close to the water. And I'm excited about that for sure. As you can probably tell, the house actually faced to the east, so the sun rises in the front yard and it sets in the back. So when I come out here in the morning, I actually don't see the sun rise over the water, but I still get this beautiful cool breeze and the light going from dark to light is just tremendously, uh, I don't know, um, peaceful for me, if nothing else. So when the girls first moved in with us almost geez, three years ago at this point, we knew we needed to make sure they could both swim if they were going to live on the boat. So we took them both to swimming lessons. Chaz could already swim and she certainly improved quite a bit when we took her to them. McKinley, on the other hand, didn't know how to swim. Heck, she was only, I don't know, 12, 14 months old or 18 months old, something like that. Um, so she didn't know how to swim and she certainly did better at it. But what we found is after the lessons, after we went through them all, she ended up becoming um, a bit clingy. So we would get in the water, we'd get in a pool and she would cling to us and never really wanted to sort of do it on her own. And over time, you know, we have rules on the boat. If you're going to be up top, you've got to have a life jacket on. And she's perfectly comfortable wearing her life jacket. So she started to rely on that like a bit too much of a safety net. And I think it was hindering her ability to swim. We'd get in the swimming pool and she would get a life jacket on and she would jump in the pool. So what we ended up doing here was um, somebody told us about a swim trainer life jacket. It's a, It kind of goes a strap under the crotch and it goes up on the belly in the back. And it has like nine little pads in it. And what you can do is you let them use it and get used to it and you take one of the flotation pads out of it and they get used to that and you take another one out and in the last two weeks we have reduced this thing down to where she only has three of the three or four of the nine pads in it um, and man is she swimming so much better so we're close we're not quite there but we're very 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 close and each day she gets in the pool we do make her take it off and she has to go to the edge where she can't touch and swim across the pool and she's able to get across without it and then we let her play for the next couple hours and she wears it um, but what's amazing to me is she wanted to snorkel in fins and man it is like it's like it's like she's breathing in the air she just puts her head down and she swims back and forth and around the pool and she'll stay under for you know stay 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 your head down in the water for a good five to ten minutes and never even lift it up to take a breath. It's amazing. And the swim trainer has really worked. As you can see here, she loves to snorkel. She'll put her fins and mask and uh, snorkel on and just swim back and forth in the pool and does a pretty good job at it. The good news is she's comfortable enough at this point that we can start removing more and more of the flotation deals. Uh, kind of every other day I take another panel out of the um, swim trainer. It started with nine and she's down to four at this point. We're still working on getting comfortable with actually going down underwater, like actually putting her head all the way under. So we keep encouraging her to jump in off the steps in hopes that, you know, her face goes down underwater. And even when she does go under and the snorkel fills with water, she doesn't freak out anymore. She just sort of lifts her head up, spits it out or blows it out and then continues on. So we are getting closer and having the pool right here at the house with the canal behind it. We just have to do that. One of the things I didn't actually think I would miss as much as I ended up realizing I do is the ability to take a really long, hot shower. You know, when you live on a boat, certainly you have all the amenities that you have at home, except for your hot water tank is just smaller given the size. So the ability to frankly take a 30 minute hot shower once in a while feels really, really good. Uh, so I, I actually uh, was a bit surprised at just how much I enjoy being able to do this at home <laughs> again. <laughs> Grandpa? Yes? You, do you know when you get old and you like kind of die? Yes. That's the life cycle of humans. What does that mean? It means... I don't know. It's just kind of what happens? People are born and then eventually they die? Yeah, once they're old. 
Yeah. Yeah, if they're old or if something happens, like they get very unhealthy or they get a disease or maybe in a bad accident or something. Any of those I can't talk about. Why? Because you told me they can't wish death. Well, I don't want you to wish death, but it's okay to talk about death. Death is a real thing, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, bye, viewers. <laughs> <laughs> so one week after moving into the house, this is in the news. A strengthening storm. Now, watch this track as we go through the next couple of days, and we notice the high sitting to the north of it. So that's going to tend to bend this back towards the west, and that continues to really be the big question mark with this as we go through the next several days. So that tail end of the forecast, still low confidence in that because when we look at the the various computer models, we're still seeing a big spread in some of these computer models. So you look at all the various computer models, you see that, that tight clustering in the beginning, but notice how as time goes on, you're seeing more of a spread. You're seeing some going over Florida, you're seeing some going up towards Georgia and South Carolina as well. So that's where we're seeing more and more of that spread in these computer models. Here's the European and the GFS. The European is the white, the red is the GFS. So you can see as we get into Saturday, we still have pretty good agreement on the forecast track, but notice as we go through the weekend, you're starting to see things are kind of falling apart as far as that consensus, that agreement in between the two computer models, because by Monday, what we're looking at is the European much further to the south. You've got the GFS further towards the north, and watch as time goes on. You're seeing the GFS basically holds it out over water, maybe turning it a bit more towards the north, where the European moves right over the state. So that's where we have these big differences between the computer models. And then you eventually see that turn more towards a north and northeasterly direction with the European. But what's steering this is the high, the high pressure ridge sitting to the north of Dorian. And it will be really the key of how strong that is as we go through the weekend that really determines exactly where this ends up going. If it's weaker, it would allow Dorian to turn sooner to the north. And then if it's stronger, it's going to keep it more on that westerly track. In the end, the boat was running fine. It was just uh, really, really low on fuel. I took it over to Fisherman's Village, um, filled it up with gas. Everything ran just perfect, which was great. I then took it to a small boat yard where we're going to have a bottom job done on it. The idea was we need to do the work anyway. Let's go ahead and get it out of the water, up on the hard, and protect it in the event that this storm does cut across Florida like it was being predicted in the beginning. Well, everything around here is hurricane proof. Look at those street signs. Wow. I think we all know the outcome of this in the end, right? So that high pressure system sitting out in the Atlantic weakened. It allowed the storm to turn up to the north and it ended up staying outside of the east coast of the U.S., never actually crossed Florida. So in the end, we had some wind and rain, but nothing at all that caused a storm or any damage or issues. With the heavy weather passing us by and the boat not at the dock, we took advantage of the free space and I decided to go ahead and teach Swab how to go ahead and cast and fish. Uh, so the good thing is we actually have fish right here at the bottom of the, uh, the canal here. So some catfish and redfish and sheep's head. And so he doesn't, oh, look at You might have just got the biggest one so far. Oh, oh he caught me. <laughs> yep. All right, stop right there. All right. It's a catfish. It is a catfish. Nice catch, huh? Okay, let's get him off the hook and back in the water. With the storm well up the east coast of the U.S., uh, the weather here was really nice. Uh, the boatyard was able to make some progress on the boat because they weren't involved with 
pulling a bunch of other boats for the storm. So as you can see, they went ahead and uh, kind of planed and sanded the bottom surface, removed all of the gel coat, put a couple of coats of barrier coat on, and then ultimately uh, two coats of ablative paint. Um, and then they did a third run right at the water line itself, even painted the outdrive with the ablative paint. I hope you enjoyed this week's video and next week come back and join us while we take you along for a little bit of a boat ride, do some fishing and just enjoy some of our new lifestyle. Thanks everybody. Safe sailing. <laughs>